Time to go to one of our football friends on the phone. It's Mike McAllister from QSNation.com. Mike, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. Hi, Mike. Uh, Thanksgiving plans? What are you doing? Well, we're uh, because we've got two families, and we're going to mine first and the, my wife's second, and uh, taking our seven-month-old month son around for both of us, and I'm sure uh, we'll probably eat too much as well. So oh. that's that's kind of the plan. Both in the Syracuse area, both families? Yes. Yeah, well, I, uh, my my parents live out in Marcellus, uh, just outside of Syracuse, and then my wife's uh, family lives in Cicero. So, nice, very good. Scott Schaefer, no surprise, he was fired yesterday, or was it a surprise they made the announcement before the end of the regular season? I was a little bit surprised it came when it did. Not entirely surprised that it happened. You know, you start hearing a lot of rumblings, and then they get louder week after week. And you know, usually the where there's smoke, there's fire thing comes into play. So I I was prepared for him being fired. Uh, I didn't necessarily agree with that. I wasn't in that camp. I was in the give him more time camp. But um, I was a little bit surprised it came out the week before. I thought giving him time sort of going into that last game, uh, maybe without it publicly being known that that was his last game, might have been a good thing. But at the same time, maybe this becomes a rallying cry for the team. They try to win this last game for Coach. So, um if, you know, Coach Schaefer was informed that he wasn't going to be back this week, it was going to get out whether Syracuse made an official announcement or not. So yeah. um, if they decided they wanted to tell him now just so that he knows, uh, then, you know, you got to release it to the public because uh, nothing is safe anymore. Everything is leaked out. So a little bit surprised, but, uh, you know, not entirely. What kind of reaction from current and former players? I know you've uh, posted some articles on QSNation.com about this. So what kind of reaction are you getting from the players on the team now and uh, former players about him being fired? Well, it's it's very mixed from the former players. Every single person to a man, you know, current players, former players, recruits, commits, every single, you know, parents of recruits and commits, parents of current and former players, everyone has said Scott Schaefer is, uh, an amazing guy. He's a great guy, and we love him as a person. Everyone has said that. Then what you have is a reaction on what this does for Syracuse football. And it, it, the reaction from current players is, is 100% in support of Schaefer, thinking he should have been back. The reaction from former players is very split. You've got about half the people that uh, think that he deserves more time and there should be some more patience regarding uh, his tenure and trying to give him time to uh, coach the players that he recruited and brought in, the ones that have Syracuse fans excited, the Eric Dungies and Jordan Fredericks and Steve Ishmael, et cetera. And then there's some that say, listen, it's a bottom-line business and you got to win, and if you're not winning, then we need to move on. So very interesting to see uh, you know, former players, some of which played for him, some of which did not, uh, just to see that the reaction is pretty split down the middle. So uh, I think that kind of summarizes where the fan base is. It seems like there were a large portion of people on both sides of the coin there. Well, time ticks pretty quickly these days. Uh, it used to be you'd get a few years to develop a program. Uh, Coach McPherson is an example of that, actually, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah. I pointed out in my blog that I know you read about the Duke coach, David Cutcliffe, who got six years. He's now in his eighth year, but it took him six years to have a winning record in a single season down there. Why does that not occur? anymore yeah because we're in the you know everything is now 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 24 7 news cycle immediate gratification society which is unfortunate because you can't build anything anymore you have to be uh you know nick saban come in and take a team from five and seven to, to ten and two right away and if you don't you're considered a failure and i just i think that that's unfortunate it takes away from uh, a lot of uh good stories from Coach Mack type of situations. I mean, imagine Coach Mack coming into Syracuse now and trying to build the program up, and after three years, you know, he's won four to five games every single year, and then, you know, they decide to fire him like they've done with Scott Schaefer. You never have the 87 season. You never have the win over Nebraska. You never have the, the Donnie McPherson's and the Marvin Graves and those type of players and the transition to Coach P, which brought the Donovan McNabbs and all those type of guys. You never have that entire era because you're still trying to build. And so I think Syracuse has to be careful in that they don't want to get in the habit of every three years trading coaches off because then you develop a reputation as a coach killer and then no one wants to come coach for you. So I think whoever the next guy is, they have to take that patient approach, give them, I think, at least four years, if not five, and see where you're at at the end of that. But I'm with you. I like the, the reference to Coach Mack. Uh, a lot of Syracuse fans wanted him fired after three or four years back then. 
Uh, there was the Sack Mac Pack, if I remember correctly. Hmm. Um, and then David Cutcliffe, a, a great example. Even go back to Rutgers and, and Greg Schiano. It took him uh, several years before he was finally able to build Rutgers up, and they were patient with him and let him do it. Um, the last thing I'll say on that is I would encourage everyone listening to go read Dave's Dave's uh, blog post on, on Scott Schaefer. I thought it was a great, well-written, insightful piece that kind of gave you a little bit of insight into uh, Coach Schaefer and who he is as a guy. So I thought it's really good for people to go check out. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, my blog is playingtheangle.com. Your website is qsnation.com. And now where do we turn as Syracuse football fans? Who are the leading guys to take this job? And do they want the job, Mike? It sounds like they do. I mean, one of the guys that's that's uh, come out publicly and said he would be very interested is Ed Orgeron, and Syracuse fans will remember him as a defensive line coach back in the mid-'90s when Coach Key was here, and, and Syracuse was a relevant program, top 25 year in, year out. So um, he seems to be a guy that's, that's getting a lot of buzz. He's a guy that's also known as one of the best recruiters in, in college football. He's won the award from Scout and from Rivals for Recruiter of the Year multiple times, so he's a guy that should be able to bring talent into the program, which would obviously be uh, an important aspect of the job. And then he's got recruiting connections everywhere across the country, including in the Northeast, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York City, etc. Another guy that's getting some buzz is Scott Frost, the offensive coordinator out in Oregon. Um, he, he interviewed for the job at Boise State when Mark Coyle was there. Didn't end up getting the job, but Mark Coyle thinks very highly of him, was very impressed by the interview process, ended up going a different direction, but kept him on his short list in case he went somewhere else or needed to make another change at Boise. And now that he's at Syracuse, it sounds like there's some uh, mutual interest there. I think Oregon's offense on the carrier don't turf is something that would be very intriguing if he can bring in the athlete. The downside to him is he's a West Coast, Midwest guy. He doesn't have those recruiting connections in the Northeast. But if he brings in an assistant who does, that could end up being a very good marriage. And then I'll give you a little bit of a dark horse as well. Uh, Mike Sanford, the offense coordinator at Notre Dame, was the offensive coordinator at Boise State uh, the, the last year that Mark Coyle was out there. And he thinks very highly of, of Mike Sanford. Mike Sanford's father was, was a longtime head coach. So he's got coaching in his blood. He's considered a young uh up-and-coming offensive mind, so I think he's a guy that could be considered as well. But I think Frost and Orgeron are the, are the two top guys. Talking to Mike McAllister from uh, QSNation.com here on the Talk of the Town at 100.7 FM WUTQ. What happens to these recruits that were already in the fold for Syracuse? Do they stay and wait to see who is named the new head coach, or do some of them jump ship? None of them have said that they're decommitting, and everyone has either said that they're sticking with Syracuse no matter what, or they're going to wait and see who the new coach is. The guys, the, the two players that I think uh, have the they have the shortest time frame between this whole situation and when they're going to be actually enrolling in a school are three-star quarterback Rex Culpepper and three-star athlete Mo Neal because they're both early enrollees, which means they're going to be enrolling in a school the first week of January. So they've got four to four to five weeks or so before they have to make their final decision, which means from a Syracuse perspective. You want to try to get a new coach in here as soon as possible to try to talk to those guys because I believe those are the two best players in the entire class. And regardless of who the new coach is, those are guys that you have to keep. Bring in the new coach as soon as possible. Have him get in touch with those guys and tell them that he's, they're still a part of his plan and that I think they will be fine and stick with Derek. Because even though they had a lot of ties to the old coaching staff, the Scott Schaefer staff, they love the school as a whole. So there's a lot of reasons why they would want to stick with Derek. So I, I think... That's really where things are. Every, a lot of everyone else is kind of in the, I want to see who the new coach is. The interesting thing to monitor in this situation is just because you're committed to Syracuse and you want to stick to Syracuse doesn't mean that the new coach will want to keep you. And, and there may be some attrition there where a couple of guys, the new coach comes in and says, sorry, but you don't fit my system. You need to look elsewhere. I don't think that would be the case with Moniel or Rex Culpepper, although that's always a risk. I think those guys can fit pretty much anywhere. But some of the other guys, maybe the lower-ranked guys, I think, uh, are a little bit at risk of, of the new staff coming in and saying, hey, well, we think we need to go in another direction. Mike, I think that's a that's an interesting point. You, you mentioned uh, Mark Coyle and uh, his connections being kind of young to the SU program, talked about uh, the recruitment factor. What is the overall morale uh, right now with some of the some of the players and the staff? Well, I think they're disappointed. Um, you can tell how much the current staff cares about these the the players that they're coaching they they've developed a relationship and developed a bond and they've become close with them and their families and uh 
Okay, you don't you don't see that everywhere. And seeing how much not only Scott Schaefer but the rest of the coaches genuinely care about <clears throat> the well being of, of their players and and care about them beyond just how can you help me win football games is something I think is, is kind of a refreshing thing uh, nowadays. Where yeah, and important. You know, yeah, absolutely. And, and the bottom line, the winning bottom line, seems to be the thing that everyone is focused on. And the fact that um, you know this staff was able to get the the program to uh, uh, reach uh, very high academic heights and, and be very strong on that that perspective. The fact that they didn't have off field issues, there weren't scandals, there weren't kids getting into trouble. So they were they were recruiting high quality kids that you know also had some potential on the field. Uh, it, it's kind of a shame to see that end, but, you know, this kind of is what it is, the business side of things. But these coaches are, are, are upset that they're not going to be able to continue to coach them. The players are, are upset that they're not going to be able to continue to get coached by guys that they kind of viewed as father figures. But I think ultimately, you know, when a new staff comes in, everyone will move on and, and they'll continue their careers just fine. What are the financials involved here? Uh, is there a buyout for Schaefer? What's the going rate for a Syracuse football coach these days? How much are they going to dig into their budget to uh, pay a new coach? What are the financials, Mike? Well, Schaefer, I believe, was owed somewhere in the $1.2 to $1.4 million uh, for next year. My understanding is his buyout is not that full amount, which usually it is but maybe half of that, so somewhere in the five hundred dollars to $700,000 range, which as a buyout is pretty cheap. Uh, that's just kind of my understanding from talking to a couple people. I don't have the specific exact official figure, but that's kind of the roundabout area I, I've been told. Uh, but as far as a new coach, I think they got to open up the wallet. If you're going to be at the ACC level and you're going to make coaching changes and you want to get someone that's worth getting, not only for the head coach, but for the coordinators and the position coaches, you've got to be better than the bottom tier of the ACC, which is what they are right now. They are the bottom of the barrel in the ACC in terms of paying their coaches. Mm. And it's hard to get guys that can come in and be good coaches when you're paying that. So I don't think you're going to see the $1.2 to $1.4 million tag on, on a new coach. My understanding is that the board of trustees either have or are approving a significantly higher salary, maybe in the – the two and a half to three million dollar range. Wow. Potentially. So, um, if, if that is the case, from you know, I, I've been told that by a couple of people that were secondhand sources. So, you know, kind of take it for its worth a little bit. But there seems to be some smoke there that Coyle has talked to the board and said, "Listen, we need to spend some money here." So, I think that's what you'll see. Is you'll see, you know, some somewhere in the two to three million dollar per year range for a new head coach, and then you'll see the uh, the salaries of the coordinators get bumped up significantly as well. Which brings to mind one other possible scenario. Scott Frost is hired as your head coach, and you bring in Ed Orgeron as your defensive coordinator. I think that's probably a little bit of a pipe dream, but not impossible. All right. Mike, thanks for your time. And uh, folks can catch up on uh, QSNation.com with all the details if they want to dig in further. Appreciate your time, Mike. Thanks, Mike. All right. I appreciate it.